This pedunculated are two types. One is subserosal. I will draw the diagram, okay? And submucosal. Okay, so these are the locations. So now I will draw the diagram. I'll show the locations, okay? Okay, the first of all, the subserosal. You have to understand the layering effect. So this layer, this is called perimetrium or serous layer. Serous layer. So if a tumor or fibroid is arising from the uterus and it is under the perimetrium, we call it subserosal type. Okay, so this is subserosal type. And if the uh, fibroid arising from the at the location of um, in inside the myometrium, we call it interstitial. So this is subserosal type. This is mural type or interstitial and this is submucosal We consider the endometrium as a mucus layer. Okay, let me uh, change the little color of the endometrium. Okay, so this is submucosal. submucosal type, right? And this is the uterus. Look, uh, the mural type, it can be in the cervix too. inside the cervix and it can be here and is growing within the muscle but close to the cervical canal. So this is CX canal. This is fibroid. 
Okay, so now fibroid can be pedunculated. Pedunculated means, uh, let me draw it here. Pedunculated means it has a pedicle. It is the subserous type. Okay, and the serous layer will go around it. Okay, so this is this is pedical and this is called pedunculated subserosal type and pedunculated submucosal type Okay, this is pedunculated sub mucosal type. This is pedicle. And this is this type is submucosal pedunculated type. These two are dangerous. Why? Because this is as a, this has a pedicle, and through the pedicle, there are the blood vessels. Traveling through it, through the pedicle, blood vessels is traveling through it. Understand that. If it is torsioned, twisted, so it will block the artery and vein, it will collapse. And this part will have ischemic pain. That's why, and it can happen, the torsion can happen anytime during working time, gymnastics time, sports time, any time. And the submucosal type, it widens the bleeding surface of endometrium. Look at here. It arises from here. It's a little space through which the pedicle is attached. But the tumor is growing and in front of the tumor or around the tumor is all um, bleeding surface, endometrium. And during the menstruation, there will be huge bleeding. That's why a patient develops menorrhagia, heavy bleeding. And if this, this could be small, this could be bigger, and this could be singular, this could be multiple. So, more the size bigger and more the number is increased, more the bleeding and patient will develop anemia, fatty to weakness, everything. Okay, so patient's hemoglobin will go down. Look at here, there will be, a, there is another situation that as you know that this is the external loss and this is internal loss, fine. And this is cervical canal. Okay, so this is internal os. This is external os. And situation can be like that. There might be fibroid or peranculated fibroid arising from the 
cervix and is hanging inside the vagina. Okay, so these are again pedunculated fibroid from the cervix into the vagina. So now what happened if there is a um, fibroid, bigger fibroid inside the vagina, a pedunculated type and now what can happen the delivery? Delivery of the full-term baby is not possible. There might be an injury, tearing and rupture and bleeding. So that's why they will do the C-section. There might be multiple uh, fibroid. They are adhered or closing the external loss. So they, this is the indication for C-section because we don't want any type of extra bleeding during this time. Okay, so this is important to understand. Let me show you that how endometrium goes around it. Okay, now you can easily understand the scenario and situation. Okay, so these are the types of fibroid that we can see um, in the patient and patient will come with some symptoms based on the location and based on the size situation and the size and location and uh, numbering and also the type of fibroid okay so accordingly we we need to correlate the patient sign symptoms based on your findings based on your findings in sonography okay so these are the Location, so you need to remember this. So now you understand that do I why do I need to scan the vaginal part? Why we can we need to scan the false pelvis? False pelvis is due to this pedunculated subserous fibroid, and this is also pedunculated uh, subserous fibroid hanging inside the vagina. Okay, and <coughs> you can understand that why it is not possible. Uh, to conceive the baby and making it um, full term because you need to evaluate is there any enough space inside the uterine cavity or not why this girl is having recurrent or frequent uh, miscarriage then you need to understand let's check the internal loss external loss cervical canal let's check the uh, endometrium is there any space occupying lesion inside the endometrium that occupies the cavity and there is no space for the new growing baby so baby is getting uh, miscarriage every time okay so we need to evaluate it that's why when you do it please do it 100% correctly otherwise you will make it Mister. Okay, so now I will discuss about the sono appearance of the Leo myoma. Sono appearance of the fibroid. Keep that in mind. The fibroid comes off from the 
myometrium. So it contains the muscle fibers. Muscles, that is cells and the lot of fibrous stroma, connective tissue stroma. So it lo uh, looks like a solid mass and it has a uh, layering effect too. Okay, so now sono appearance. Number one, it is a solid tumor, solid mass. may be necrosed inside there is a necrosis like a cystic area containing fluid mostly it is round oval round and oval shaped it has a smooth border because it has a capsule and that capsule helps us to identify the borders and we can easily measure it. It is mostly homogeneous medium level hypoechoic it has layering effect Means it looks like a multi layer, multi layer is coming. Hypervascular, then normal myometrium. because it has feeding vessels you can see the feeding vessels okay you will see it. feeding vessels entering into the fibroid you can see it or sometimes you will see the feeding vessels around the fibroid making little darker around it and you click the color then you will see there is a vascularity and number nine you can see calcification you can see calcifications and with shadowing sorry Calcifications with shadowing. Okay, if you can remember all those things, so uh, you can easily describe it. You can easily describe a mass like a fibroid inside the uterus. Okay, so now I will draw the sonographic appearance, but a couple of things I will I like to mention that it is a solid mass that means usually we don't see any fluid containing unless there is a necrosis it is mostly rounded oval and the shape, size the and different sizes different sizes 
and it has a smooth border that because it has a capsule and sometimes you'll see there is a as refracting shadowing is coming that's why you may not see the clear border to measure the uh, mass it is homogeneous means it looks all over same medium level hypoechoic and is a, there is a layering effects and the hypervascular uh, because it has a feeding vessels and calcifications with shadowing okay so now I will draw the diagrams when you see pathology I'm making it bigger because I need to draw multiple fibroid. Okay, so this is bladder here. Say so this is bladder, okay? And as you know, this is trans abdominal, and as you know, this is a rectum. So this is bladder. This is the uterus, and this is rectum this is vagina this is external os this is internal os at the level of itmas and this is cervical canal if there is a anterior fibroid and it grows bigger than what happened it will push it will push the bladder anteriorly So sonographically you will see the indentation indentation on to the bladder. Now understand if there is a fibroid arising from the posterior surface then what happened on the rectum? Okay, you are probably noticing that I am also making, giving the shape and sizes and the sono appearance at the same time. You can say what is the other characteristic. So now, It is compressing the rectum. So patient may feel difficulties to pass the feces. There might be some obstruction. Okay, so now, if this is a situation, so you might see the layering effect. And I found the fibroid 
in the interior as those who are old enough. They look like a old by looking at that it is not fresh. This is little heterogeneous. Old one is heterogeneous. There's a lot of calcifications from and shadowing, layering effect and little heterogeneous. Okay. So you will see like that. And this is layering effect. And now if there is some calcifications, you will see that calcification is bright area. This is calcified area that is bright and it may produce shadowing. Okay, it may produce shadow. If there is a necrosis, so that necrosis you will see an aquake inside. Okay, so this is calcification, this is shadowing, this is layering. layering effect and this is necrosis this is necrosis okay so that sonographic appearance i'm giving anterior and posterior and if you see the endometrium is deformed and there is a mass here then you have to understand that this is submucosal type of fibroid submucosal type of fibroid and this type is subserosal subserosal and if you see a fibroid here So this is interstitial. Type. Interstitial type. This is subserosal, subserosal. This is submucosal interstitial. Okay? So these are the sonographic appearance you will see. Well, you will be looking at the fibroid, but some fibroid can be very ugly looking, very heterogeneous, with shadowing. Okay, so this is a fibroid. 